Hello, today we're going to talk about virgin sex, and I hope that you will share this with young couples who are getting married or with your kids who have not had sex yet. And even if you have had sex, which we all have had virgin sex at some point or another, it's good to rethink what might have been, what could have been, and how to think about that. Hello again, and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Hey all, this is Lori, and Dr. Adam is gone today. He's on vacation. So you've got me, and we have done the drawing for our social media contest. Yay! We have a winner who we are going to announce at the end of this podcast. We're so excited about that. And I wanted to remind you all that we have a new date for our fall retreat, which is going to be in Asheville, North Carolina. And that is November 15th, and we've broken it out so that it's more affordable for more of you. Uh, We're going to do the classes separately from the classes and the counseling. So you can still see Adam and I and two of our colleagues for private counseling if you wish. But if you just want to join us and learn the things that we're teaching, please call us. And our website is loveandsex360.com, L O V E A N D. SEX360.com. Today, I'm going to talk with you about virgin sex. And this, I just want to say, if this is for you, you know, this is a really exciting moment, something to think about that is an experience that you will probably remember for the rest of your life. So I want you to have it as good as you can have it. I hope as a female, I can help you so that it doesn't have to hurt uh, because a lot of young women are really afraid of that. And as a male, I want to help you be more comfortable with the experience so that you have more confidence and enjoy it. And the first thing I would say to you is have sex for the first time with somebody that you love and respect and somebody that you believe loves and respects you. That's the best way to do it. Um, Don't feel like you need to get rid of your virginity. I mean, it's not something to be gotten rid of. I I also probably take issue with the language that says, I gave somebody my virginity or they took my virginity. The first time you have sex is very special, but it's something that two people agree on. It's not just a gift. It's not something that you give somebody. It's something that you have for yourself. And that's why I want you to have it with somebody that is meaningful to you. Um, Many of you listening might actually be getting married and never had sex before. Uh, At Awakenings Counseling, we talk with a lot of young Christian couples who have never had sex before. We also talk with young Middle Eastern couples who culturally it's been forbidden for them to have sex. And so it's their very first experience. And there's a lot to know about sex before you have it for the first time. So step one I want you to take lots and lots of time. If this is your wedding night, truly your wedding night and your virgins, please don't actually have intercourse on that night. Sounds crazy because I think there's this old myth, right? You gotta have sex on your wedding night. But having sex on your wedding night could include touching and arousal and the first time you're naked together. And that is a wonderful experience There's so much to learn about each other's bodies that I would tell you, slow down, give each other time to know each other's bodies. If alcohol is permitted in your culture, go ahead and have a glass of champagne, maybe a couple glasses of wine. Don't get drunk because that will numb you to the whole experience. But maybe enough to reduce your nervousness, to reduce your anxiety would be helpful. And, you know, virgin sex is an arousal process. It ends in sexual intercourse, but it doesn't start there. And so most couples need a couple of weeks, really, to build up to it. And all those touches building up to it are delightful. And if you quickly rush to sexual intercourse, in some ways you kind of shortchange yourself about the exciting touches that are also arousing. So please go ahead 
take some time. Give yourself permission to get to know each other's bodies. That would be step one. Lots of time. Step two, both of you need to know where her clitoris is because, again, the woman's sexual universe is in her clitoris, not her vagina. And so much of what you might have learned uh, maybe in pornography or through what is even taught in school is, you know, that sexual intercourse is where it's at for both parties. You see it in the movies. You know, somehow or another, uh, nobody touches her clitoris, and in 10 seconds, she has this amazing orgasm. I want to tell you that is totally false. If you are a man and you've never had sex, know that the woman's clitoris is what you need to touch, and that is what is most pleasurable and most arousing to her. And if you're a young woman, I want you to know where your clitoris is, too. It's It is surprising to me, but I actually have couples come in and they haven't heard that information. They don't know that information. Only really 15% of all women reach orgasm through sexual penetration. So you need to know that this organ is analogous to the male penis. So if you can imagine having sex without anybody ever touching your penis, guys, that's what having sex is without anybody ever touching your clitoris for a young woman. I mean... I would love it, girlfriend, if you could look at your genitals with a mirror, if you've never done that. I know that sounds crazy, but please try it and know your own body so that you can share your own body. Talk to your gynecologist. Many times, young women who are having sex for the first time, right, they go see a gynecologist for the first time, right, when they become sexually active. And so they're anxious about all kinds of things. First time somebody's ever really looked at them. And a doctor's ever looked at them, but ask that doctor to get a mirror out and to kind of show you where everything is. It's a great educational experience and will be very helpful to you later. And you can look yourself. It's okay to look. It's okay to touch. It's your body, which leads me to step three. So step three, if you are a young woman and it's permissible in your culture or your religion to touch yourself, I would love for you to teach yourself how to have your own orgasm because this is your body and it's the best way without pressure to really learn how your body responds because when you're on the spot and you're having sex for the first time, a lot of times just the nervousness of that means that it's hard to relax, it's hard to get aroused and if you don't know where you're going, it's really hard to get there. So. A vibrator is kind of a sure thing. When I was first a sex therapist, I used to always instruct women to use their hands first because I think that that brings better genital integration with the body. It's like you have perfect biofeedback. And this is a prescription. This is not, I'm not telling you to masturbate if your uh, priest or leader says that masturbation is wrong. This is something that is really an important exercise for you to do from a sex therapist. Sometimes I even write this as a prescription on a prescription pad for people who are religious or who have been told masturbation is wrong. This is something that is a preparation to get to know your own body. First of all, I would say to you, you use a lubricant even in this exercise because you know, it's really hard to touch yourself dry. And the same thing when you're making love is that your male partner or your new husband should not touch you dry. You should always have a lubricant when you're being touched, even on the outside of your body, because that tissue is very delicate, very sensitive. I would not use a warming kind of lubricant. Sometimes there is Um, different brands that say, you know, it's warming and it makes you tingle. And I would say that often that is too intense. So don't use that. The other thing is, is you should probably take about 20 minutes of undressing, massage, long stroking, other than her breasts and genitals that and gentle cuddling before you even touch the clitoris. Um, And if you don't know where the clitoris is, it's good to look. So I think some women are really shy about showing their bodies. This may be her first time to show, but it's a very sacred, lovely act of undressing and revealing yourself. 
So even though it brings anxious feelings, know that some of that anxiety is also exciting and wonderful as you begin to unrobe and share with your partner everything about all the secrets of your body. So try that. And I would say that, you know, don't compare yourself to a male arousal cycle. A a man gets aroused almost instantaneously. Uh, Once he has an erection, he is fully able to have sexual intercourse. And a woman is not. Even if she's lubricated, that doesn't mean she's ready for sexual intercourse. In fact, for most women, lubrication is a very early sign of arousal. It, it does not necessarily mean she's ready for sexual intercourse. The time a woman is ready for sexual intercourse is when she says she's ready. So that means when she has like vasocongestion, that means swelling in her genitals, and she feels desire, she feels arousal, that would be the time she's ready. And so, girlfriend, I want you to kind of Tell him that. I want you to be brave and say, okay, I'm ready now. I'm ready for this experience. And we're going to come back after the break and kind of talk about how you get your body ready. And gentlemen, the things that you should be thinking about in terms of helping her get ready and things to expect about the actual moment. And we will be back and talk about the winner of our social media contest in just a bit. So just a quick word about our couples intensives that both me and Lori offer. Oftentimes, healing in relationships, it just takes more than the average 50-minute session every week over several months of time. Couples intensive therapy offers an alternative to that. It happens over a weekend, typically 12 to 16 hours, somewhere in there, that really helps to calm high-conflict situations build more healthy patterns of communication. And really, it's a jump start to change, right, Lori? Like it can be something that can really catapult you into change a little bit quicker than the average once a week type of therapy situation. I think so. And people ask me, what does it look like? What do you do? And usually for me, I do a three-day itinerary. The first day is basically coming to why did they come at this point in their relationship? What is their current functioning? And then often maybe that's a Friday night, Saturday morning, we start talking about what is the dynamic, where's the toxic cycle, and then we look at their family of origin. And I would say by Saturday afternoon, that's the time that we start to really dig into how do you stop the toxic cycle. And maybe if the problem is over sexual difficulties, there's an assignment and a discussion about what that will be. And they usually complete that assignment in their hotel room all by themselves. You know, we don't do any of that, you know, supervision of that. But we then the next morning debrief that and talk about, you know, how the assignment went. There is often time at this point because of the amount of hours that we've spent together to perhaps process one trauma from the past as well. So, you know, it's a really intensive way of working. It's my favorite way to work. And, you know, I'm reducing kind of my weekly caseload at this point. So this is where I'm directing my efforts in clinical work. Right. You also get a post-intensive action plan to take home with you to follow up. We plan how you can continue this work for you. But we'd be happy to talk to you more about if you feel like an intensive is right for you, whether it'd be good to work with me or with Lori. So give us an email at info at foreplayradiosextherapy.com. We're back and we are on step four of virgin sex. Before you have sexual intercourse, girlfriend, I want you to stretch your own vagina. Now, you may never have put your fingers in your vagina, so this may sound like crazy advice. Like, do what? Yes, I really want you to do this. And I want you to do it every day for about two months before you have sexual intercourse. So when you're in the shower, I just want you to begin with one finger Put that finger sort of down the front of your vulva. The vulva is the whole thing. Some people call the vulva the vagina, but actually where the hair might grow if you haven't waxed it off, and the labia, which is the lips inside and outside, and the clitoris is at the very top of that structure, at the very apex. I want you to put your finger past your clitoris, past your urethra, which is where your urine comes out, 
and then gently slip it into your vagina. And it's not going to go very far in because of the angle, and that's totally fine because the main stretch in the vagina where most women feel the stretch is at the entrance of the vagina. We call it the vestibule. And then I want you to take your finger and actually push downwards. So you're going to push on that lower crescent of your vagina. That is what is held by the muscles of your vagina. We call those the levator ani. And when you push down on that space, you're pushing toward or backwards toward your anus. And the skin space between your the bottom of your vagina and your anus is called the perineum. And I want you to push against that very gently because that tells your muscles to relax. If you want to, you can use a really thick water-based lubricant like KY Jelly. Do not, again, use the warming stuff. Just regular original KY Jelly. And then wash it off with the shower. And just do that every day. Comfortably do one finger until you can insert two fingers and until you can insert three fingers. By the time you can insert three fingers comfortably, you're probably ready for sexual intercourse in a way that will not hurt. And I I want you to wash this area every day uh, with your hands. Don't use a washcloth. Don't use soap. Water is just fine to get yourself completely clean. Just use your hands so that you can start to feel where your clitoris is, where your labia is, know where your urethra is and your vagina. And go ahead and touch yourself as you wash. It's totally fine to get oriented to your body. And I I think that, you know, some cultures think that a woman has to bleed to prove her virginity. That is totally false. Uh, Many women do not have an intact hymen who have never had sexual intercourse. The hymen is a tiny bit of extra skin in that lower crescent of the vagina. And many times, honestly, through running, walking, gymnastics, horseback riding, whatever, that's been broken, so you're not going to bleed. And I personally don't want you to bleed. I want you to be stretched out so that it's a comfortable experience. And if you do this and do the rest of the things that I'm talking about, probably sexual intercourse will be much more comfortable for you. It doesn't have to be this really painful experience I don't want it to be that way for you. And gentlemen, I know sometimes in pop culture, there's this sense of speaking of pop culture, popping her cherry. That means that she bleeds and there's red. You know, this this really isn't a wonderful experience for the woman. It's better if she has a relaxed, comfortable experience. And we're going to talk about what your part is in this as well. So step five. If you are the male partner, I want you to, during foreplay, during sex play, before you have sexual intercourse, also stretch her vagina. So that means that I want you to put your fingers in her vagina just as part of your lovemaking as she's aroused. You know, men do some really crazy things with their fingers in women's vagina. Most of what they do that is crazy (laughs) is they um, try to simulate sexual intercourse by moving their fingers in and out really fast. And honestly, that's a waste of effort because she doesn't really feel it that way. My interim producer here is laughing. It doesn't really help her get ready for intercourse because that's not what is stimulating. Inside the vagina, there is a really special place that feels good, and that's her G-spot. And that is, if she's on her back, it's the roof of her vagina about three-quarters of the way into her vagina on the roof of her vagina, about three-quarters of a man's finger inside. And stimulating that with a gentle come-hither motion might feel good if she's very aroused. If she's not very aroused, either you are in the wrong place or she says, that makes me want to go to the bathroom. Well, if she says that, that means you're in the right place, but you're at the wrong time because she's not aroused enough to translate that to a sexual feeling. But the in and out stuff, not so great. I want you to basically put your fingers in and again, gently tug down toward her anus, toward that perineum space. Very gently hold it. And, and maybe slip your fingers in a moon shape on the bottom of her vagina because 
What you're trying to do is tell those muscles it's okay to relax. It would be awesome if she can actually squeeze your fingers with her muscles in her vagina and then relax her muscles because it's the relax movement that we want her to do when she first has sexual intercourse. Most women are anxious and they unconsciously clench their vagina because they're afraid of pain. And we want her to have conscious control of those muscles so she can relax them. So you can help her with that. And remember that you don't ever want to put your fingers in a woman dry. I highly recommend coconut oil. Uh, It smells good. It tastes good. You can switch from touching to oral sex. Again, some men think that putting his tongue in her vagina is really exciting. For most women, that's not going to, she's not going to be able to feel it very well. Um, The tongue on the clitoris is really what needs to happen in oral sex to get her excited. So remember, spend time making out, touching before you do any of this other sort of touching inside the vagina. But step five, as your partner is more relaxed and is enjoying your touch, then you can also stretch her vagina. And that will help her have more comfortable sexual intercourse. Okay, when should you have sexual intercourse? We've talked about when she says she's ready is the first step. So she's the one who needs to give the signal. Secondly, I think the best time to have sexual intercourse is when she's highly, highly aroused, but she's at the very crest of orgasm, so before she has an orgasm. So hopefully when you've fooled around and you've touched a lot, you know how to bring her to orgasm, and she has told you how to bring herself to orgasm. And remember, when you're having sex, it's a two-back beast with four hands. Whose hands are touching what part of the body, it doesn't matter. If her hands, it's more convenient for her to touch herself, awesome. If it's more convenient for him to touch himself, awesome. That is not masturbation. That is making love. We have four hands, two backs when we're making love. It's one beast. It's one animal. It's one body. So feel free to do what is most convenient But right before she reaches orgasm, she actually has the most vasocongestion. Vasocongestion is swelling, just the way a man's penis gets erect with blood flow. A woman's tissue gets erect as well. That's called vasocongestion. And that cushions her against any kind of pain. So right before then, I think um, you can tell probably by her elevated pulse, her labial swelling, If you're looking at her genitals, they're going to deepen in color. If she's a virgin, she's going to go from pink to red. If she's had a child, obviously not a virgin at that point, but she would go from red to purple. So women change colors as they get more aroused. And obviously, no matter what, I want you to use copious amounts of artificial lubrication for this first intercourse. So during this time when you are... Uh, Right before orgasm, make sure that your penis has lubrication on it, that she has plenty of lubrication around her vagina, inside her vagina. Just do this as part of lovemaking or do it even before you get going. Okay, step seven, before sexual intercourse. Um, Guy, guy friend, I want you to show her what you like. Tell her how you like to be touched. Show her how you like to be touched. So many women are anxious that they don't really touch a man enough. And then I hear from men this complaint. Well, she doesn't really touch me. She doesn't really know what she's doing. And it's like, you know what? If this is virgin sex, she doesn't. You might have seen a movie. You might have seen a porn film, which, by the way, is a poor educator of what actually happens when couples make love. Um, But you might know a little bit more than she does, and you've probably masturbated. So go ahead and give her lots of encouragement. Show her the pressure that you like to be touched, the tension that you like with your hands. Give her lots of encouragement for oral sex. Use coconut oil, which makes your penis more slippery, tastes and smells good. Make sure y'all are clean because women have this really keen nose and they get really anxious about it in the beginning. So please tell her and show her and encourage her with lots of verbal feedback about what you like. Okay, step eight, the moment. 
of sexual intercourse, what do you do? First of all, I would say for most couples starting on her back, so traditional missionary style is probably traditional because that's how most people make love the first time, or her on top so she can control the depth and the speed of intercourse might be good as well. But the man should enter her slowly, completely, and then stop. So when you enter her, you should go all the way in and be very still. And that gives her time to open up, to feel you inside her, and to kind of get comfortable with the experience um, so that her vagina accommodates you. And guys, I mean, some of you are going to climax right there. And we're going to talk about that next. And that's okay. You don't worry about that. But for the first time you are encompassed by a vagina, very exciting. It should be very exciting. That's awesome. I just want you to stay still and then come out and probably don't go back in again. Because one time a fully encased penis for a woman is kind of a lot to integrate in her mind, in her body. And then maybe bring each other to orgasm in another way, through oral sex or manual stimulation. Do that. And then rest together, holding each other, kissing, talking about what that was like. Step nine, a man should expect premature ejaculation on the first lovemaking. It's so exciting. You've waited your whole life. It's, you know, men climax for two reasons. One, because it feels so good. That's erotic stimulation. And two, because they are just so nervous and anxious. So expect to come early the first time. That's not a failure. That's wonderful. That's You experience something so exciting for the first time. You should feel great about that. She should feel great about that. Forget everything you've seen, everything you've learned about sexual intercourse from the movies or from pornography. A man who lasts a long time is not necessarily the biggest blessing to a woman and certainly not to a virgin. So just say, I was so excited to be inside you. It, this was wonderful. And just relax and know that that is so normal. So step 10, I want you to look at each other in the eyes and be present with each other. Forget everything you've ever learned Try to be in your experience. Don't compare yourself to things you've seen. Don't compare yourself to things you've heard. Don't tell all your friends. Don't post it on social media for God's sake. Please, please don't, you know, text your best girlfriend afterwards and say, we did it, we did it, we did it. Let this be a private, sacred, special moment just between the two of you. So I wish you much luck with virgin sex. Uh, You have my blessing to have pleasure, to have fun, to have it be your very own experience. And know that first sex is usually not the greatest sex, that there are many things to come. There is a way to grow together that you can have sex for the rest of your life, as we talk about here on Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy, that can be good can be loving, and can even grow in excitement as you grow together. So we have our social media winner. And this winner, thank you so much for participating, all of you. Jessica Searles, you and I are going to have a one-on-one consultation about your sex life and relationship. Uh, You are our winner, and thank you for participating I wish you all a lifetime of intimacy ahead and that you enjoy this first virgin experience. You can now call in your questions to the 4Play question voicemail. Dial 833-MY-4PLAY. That's 833, the number 4, PLAY. And we'll use the questions for our mailbag episodes. Hey, help us stay on top here at 4Play. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. All content is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for therapy by a licensed clinician or as medical advice from a doctor.